Hi there, this is Dr. Knotts. Uh, today I want to speak to you on the subject of Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth is a considered to be a female deity, though it's androgynous, it's masculine or feminine, but it's often depicted as being a female deity and the wife of Baal. Um, its name is actually Ashtaroth, and in the plural it's Ashtaroth, just like Baal and Balaam is the plural. And I'm going to get into this in just a moment. So I want to teach you a little bit about Ashtaroth. And she's one of the chief entities or deities that's worshipped around the world, has been worshipped around the world since prior to the flood. And the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 1, verse 16, that God created a greater light to rule by day, which would be Satan, and a lesser light to rule by night, which would be Ashtaroth. So, we find that Astaroth, her name means a star, or literally the star. So, she's of the Caninus Majorum, or the dog star, is, is her symbol. Many people will say, no, it's the moon. But no, we're going to get into that. The moon is simply reflected, reflective of her in her manifestation and administration in the individual priest or priestess. So, in the Hebrew, her name is actually spelled Astaroth. And A-S-T-A-R-O-T-H in the English. Um, it simply means star or the star. There's a variation of worship. I mean, it's the same as the word Esther in Babylonian or Estar, Ishtar, Babylonian. Um, Ostera, German, where we get the celebration of Easter, Estar. She's the warring and fertility goddess. She's actually over... Um, an incredibly large amount of things dealing with humankind. Ashtaroth, A-S-H-T-A-R-O-T-H, is the plural of Ashtera. Ashtera is thinking of the single deity, which means the star. Now, here's what's interesting about her. Um, her name means to increase her flock through taking the very young, of the shepherd. Okay? It becomes plural because the work is done by those who are given over to her worship or to her service. So it's Ashtera is the single entity. Ashtaroth is the one that owns, possesses, and rules over those that do her work. And they do her work, which is the taking of the individual young of the shepherd. She works through unholy spirits and her job is is to take the children. In Egypt she was Isis, which is why Isis always had the wings. Um, we look at the fable of the stork and most people don't understand this, but the stork was symbolic of Isis. That's why the stork was on the head of Pharaoh. Pharaoh symbolizes Satan or Ra, the god of this world, the sun. In depiction in human form, Ashtaroth was Isis, and she was his consort. It was incest. They would marry their own. But in whatever religion it is, the key is, is she would appear as the stork, which would come by night and would steal the young. Her minions would do this also on her behalf, and they would take the bedding with the infant, and they would fly them and deliver them to Pharaoh, at the rising of the sun, when Pharaoh arose, they would then lay the infants before him. That's where they, the history of the stork came from. It wasn't a good thing. And that's why she was called the mother of all monsters. And she would do the work of stealing the children. Um, her name means the star, and she tries to mimic Jesus Christ. You realize that when Jesus was born, there was a star created. The prophecy was given in the book of Numbers. The Farsi, which is the group of the Magi out of Persia, that knew all about stars, they knew when a specific star with seven tails, symbolizing the seven spirits of God, was created, it would lead them to the one who would be the king over the earth. And that's the star of Jesus Christ. He is the bright and the morning star. And his star has the rainbow, the mercies of God that come from it. 
but she is nothing more than a reflection. You see, she reflects the light that comes from the sun, and she gets her ability to exist from the power of God himself. God created all things. By him they consist and they exist. So the work of Ashtaroth is she works in the dark. She works in the night. She works in secret. She works through the dreams, hopes, the ambitions. She's identified as the mother of all monsters that comes to take the children and to give them as an offering unto Ra, or Satan, the ruler of this world. And um, what's really interesting is this concept wasn't just Egyptian, it's, it's global. I mean, you look at, uh, for instance, pickles that are sold by Vlasic, and they use the stork as bringing the pickles. They make a joke out of it. But here's what she does. She's the chief of the female deities, which is why she's often worshipped in witchcraft. And when she gives her favor down, it's called the moon coming down. She'll inhabit her priests and priestess through the power of the moon. Why? Because they become like the moon and reflect the glory of the sun. You realize the moon has no light of itself. It simply reflects that which is given to it by the sun. Ashtaroth, as a female deity, is incapable of life. She's a goddess of death. So she's barren. And for this reason, she takes the life and takes the children. As Jesus Christ is the creator, the giver of all life, she's his nemesis in that she seeks to steal the children away that he creates in his image for his own glory. And she seeks to turn them against him. She gives them as an offering unto Ra, the sun god, who then uses his power as the false light to blind their minds so that they will not receive the gospel of the truth. So what we see here is the veil of darkness is the veil given by Ashtaroth. The veil was the wedding garment, and she's the betrothed of Satan. She's just under him. She places that veil over the minds of men and women. If you look through history, uh, historical documents from around the world, she's a fertility goddess, the goddess of love and sexuality. The Phoenicians, which are the oldest group to have traveled the world, they've been found archaeologically in the United States, 4000 BC, all around the earth. They built temples to her. Her temples are always underground. They always have a labyrinth. In that labyrinth, over the front entryway, will be the head of a bull, symbolizing Satan, who's her con consort, or the god that's over her. Inside will be prostitutes and beasts, male, female prostitutes of all ages, and beasts of every time, because she's worshipped through debauchery and sexual sin. This is one of the greatest attractions that she has, is through the sexual immoralities, licentiousness, the wickedness of men's heart. Satan will work through the desire and the love for money. Ashtaroth works through the baser sins, those that feed the flesh. I mean, we look at the history of Midas, the king who everything he touched turned to gold. Well, they actually found his famed temple, and it was a Syrophoenician, it was a Phoenician temple. It had a labyrinth that did house a great bull that was used for bestiality. Midas' own wife was said to go and have sex your relations with the bull and was supposed to have given birth to a child that was a mixture of bull and human. The post-alluvial race, those after the flood, gave birth to those first group that gave themselves over to... Typhus, Osiris, and Isis. Typhus is the name for Beelzebub. Beelzebub, literally in the Hebrew, means the lord of Typhus. And um, that's the god that they made a pact with at the Tower of Babel, which is Lucifer. Baal is Lucifer. He's different uh, in manifestation than Satan. He's the unholy spirit that fills all mankind. With Baal... Astaroth and Satan, you have the unholy trinity. 
So what happens? They gave themselves over. These Phoenicians were the first ship-faring group, and they came out of them families that gave themselves over at the Tower of Babel. What's interesting is when Israel went into sin, you would find straight across, facing the Temple of Jehovah, they built the Temple of Ashtaroth. You can still see the archaeological records of it. And it was underground. It's always pictured as a pyramid going underground, or in the darkness, pointing down. It's the star pointing down. So, her building is always hidden. Why? Because it's in the heart of men that is deceitful and wicked. For in this body dwells no good thing. It's filled with sin. She works through the power of sin in the individuals. The God of this world blinds the minds. He lies to people and deceives them. The trickery, deceit, and lies. The goddess, Astaroth, and this is why her warriors would all have a dog or a canine head on a human body. The males, the female, would have a cat head. She is symbolized by the dog star. She's androgynous, so she's male and female. The god Anubis, the god of death, is her in her masculine form. And that's why his warriors always appear as being dog-headed individuals. As the female goddess of sexuality, because she has many different manifestations, she, she would be Bast or Basti, the cat-headed goddess of sexuality. So... What's interesting is they work together to do great powerful evil. Um, witches worship Ashtaroth. They just don't realize it. They worship the goddess. Solomon gave himself over to the worship of Ashtaroth. In 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 5, it says Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. Talks about it also in 1 Kings 11, verses 31 through 35, and that's why the kingdom was wrenched from him, taken from him, because he gave himself over. It's reiterated in 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 13. It says, The high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand on the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon the king of Israel had builded for Astaroth, the abomination of the Zidonians, and for Shemash, the abomination of the Moabites, and Milcom, the abomination of the children of Ammon, did the king file. So, Ashtaroth is used as the consort of Baal in the Canaanite religions. You say, well, I thought you said Satan. Well, guess what? Satan is the name adversary. He is also another name for Lucifer that was cast down. When he's depicted in his dark form as the adversary, as the one who opposes all that is light and righteousness and is void of all light, because when he was cast down, he is void of all light. He's blacker than night. But as the false light, the false sun, he's pictured as Baal, or Baal, which simply means Lord. He mimics the Lord God. So Astaroth would be his number one. And she's almost his equal, but she's just underneath him. And that is why she is over the armies and the other stars, the ranking cosmological authorities, rulers, and thrones. And her job is to steal the hearts and minds and souls of men and women and to take their children, to keep them so they don't come to salvation, and that makes them damned. All right, this is Dr. Knotts. I'll continue with my lectures on demons, and um, I will cover Satan next. Lord bless you in your endeavors to know him. Amen.